Alan, welcome to QuickMix. How are you keeping? I'm all good, mate. How are you? Very good, thank you. Thank you for joining us here today. Bet you never thought you'd live through a pandemic. No, yeah, once in a lifetime, eh? Let's hope, let's hope let's, so, anyway. Let's hope so. Musically, it's been a pretty quick, pretty quiet year for you. Is that about fair? Yeah, and touring-wise, 100%. Um, Production-wise, I've been busier than ever. All, all that time spent in the studio, do you think the pandemic may have changed you in any way musically? No, I just think it's given me more creative space. Do you think that's influenced your latest single, Warning Signs? 100%, yeah. A lot of that music's come through the emotive feelings that have been gone on through the pandemic. And the new single's out on Anjuna Deep. Many people are really pleased to see you and the two parties collaborating like that. How'd that come about? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they just seem a perfect fit for the music. I'm excited to be, be doing more stuff with them, yeah. Can you tell me a little about the video to Warning Signs? Yeah, so Lawrence, um, his missus is a director. She did the video, um, but I think it connects perfectly with the track. Do you ever get nervous ahead of any of these releases? No, not really. Why is that? Just confident in the music, you know. I think if I like it, some other people might like it. But there, has there ever been a release that you wish you could have done differently? Uh, maybe we do what we want. Um, that created a bit of a monster. It was never intentional to be that big, but I'm so thankful that it, that it was. No doubt. Everyone's all been at home, no one's been touring and I'm guessing you have more time for your hobbies, but you like to fish, right? Yeah, big fisherman, yeah. And if you could fish anywhere in the world, where would you go? I'd go to Gillam's in Thailand. Um, I think they're called um, Karamima or something like that. I might have got the pronunciation of the fish wrong, but they're massive. Is it on the cards? Plus. Hopefully, yeah, maybe my missus will take me for my 40th birthday, who knows? <laughs> we'll have to wait and see when the restrictions lift. Yeah. And uh, talking of animals, you've got a dog, right? Yeah, bulldog. Bulldogs are popular musicians, right? Yeah, because they're lazy, we don't have to take them out much. <laughs> they can just curl up in the studio while you're making music. I also read somewhere you're amazing at FIFA. Wow, I do my best, I do my best. Why FIFA and not Pro Evo? FIFA's way better. FIFA's, I've just always played FIFA since the very first one. I don't even know if do Pro Evo still have names of teams or is Chelsea still London Blues? London Blues, yeah. Yeah, but there's your answer, that's, that's, that's the reason. But do you play career mode on FIFA or...? Do I may, mainly play online. But you always lose online. I oh, pretty much always lose. It's always yeah. kids who are better. You, yeah. You collabed with your son earlier this year. Before then, what did he think you did for a career? He's 11 now, so he's a bit more savvy on what I do. He's seen some YouTube clips and stuff. But um, my, my youngest, she's seven, she probably still thinks I'm just pressing buttons and playing boom boom music. What's the biggest thing about being a father? What's, what's that taught you? Patience. Have a lot of patience. What's the best lesson your parents taught you? To fulfill your dreams. What's the weirdest request you've ever had from a fan? Uh, got any Madonna, mate. <laughs> what have you read about yourself that made you laugh? Um, net worth. Yeah, not true, but I wish it was. We'll have to look it up. <laughs> have you ever seen an online argument resolve itself? No. <laughs> what mythical idea would most improve clubbing? Oh, unicorn taxis. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us the next lyric in this song? It was all a dream. Until I woke up. <laughs> What's the most you've ever spent on Discogs in one order? Oh, when I was probably buying old rave classics, I think I spent loads of money on a DJ rap. Um, see, our first ever single, I've forgotten the name now, Divine something. What's the one thing you think separates a good DJ from a great DJ? Not clear on the dance floor. <laughs> it does tend to help. How does the gear you use in the booth affect your performance? Well, if you've got the best equipment, there's no reason why you can't do a good job. But some people have all the gear, no idea? True, that comes with experience, I think. What's your current DJ setup? Uh, DJ S1000, Pioneer V10, and free CDJ 3000s. Have you been long-term Pioneer user? Long-term Pioneer user, I, although fairly recently on the V10 I was Alan and Heath, but I was involved in the design process of uh, the V10, so yeah. I couldn't not use it really. What's the biggest myth about being a DJ producer? That you earn loads of money. How do you use touring as a chance to test out potential label releases? Yeah, I always test stuff on the crowd, and that's, a, that's the best way of getting instant feedback on music. And those reactions, can they change your opinion of the track? Sometimes, yeah. If it doesn't, if it just clears the dance floor, then maybe I need to make some changes on it. Have you ever had a clearing dance floor situation and decided not to put it out? No, I'm too good for that. <laughs> Are you channel faders or cross fader? Channel faders. Do you have a particular strategy for, for finding new music? Um, recently, I just go on Bandcamp quite a lot and try and dig out stuff that maybe is kind of fairly underground and that people haven't seen the light on it yet, so 
try and be a bit different. What's a typical Adam Fitzpatrick transition sound like? Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> How have your sets changed over the last 10 years? I'm still playing quite a lot of nostalgic stuff, um, but I guess if anything, the only change is that they're longer now. Do you think your DJ skills have developed alongside development in technology? Um, yeah, to a, de to a degree. Um, it's always good to use the Pioneer 3000s. You can have multiple decks yeah. rather than just two vinyls, so that's been wicked. And adding more and more effects into your sets? Yeah, adding more effects. I used to use the, the, the Boss DD7 pedal and the Boss Reverb pedal, but now they're built into the mixer, so... Exactly. Yeah, it's wicked. Do you prefer 200, 2000 or 20,000 people to play to? Doesn't matter, they're always kind of got their own, their own place, really. You play festivals, clubs. How do you adapt your performance to different settings? Just go for it. Just make sure it's got plenty of energy and make sure people are dancing and having a good time. What's the worst DJ handover you've ever seen? Um, probably someone finishing on one of my big tunes, which is always a nightmare because then how do you, where, when do I get to play it? <laughs> Can you give us a quick music production tip? Yeah, don't over compress your music. Have you ever decided to change DAW? Never. Never thought about it? Never thought about it. Which DAW are you using? I use Reason. Anything you like in that in particular? Just the, it's a full virtu a virtual rack, um, now supports VSTs, it's got everything I need. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your production skills? 8. What's going to get you to 10? I'm just, the only reason I say 8 is because technology is always changing, so you're always learning, so there's got to be some space. Do you ever find it hard to finish your tracks? Sometimes, yeah, writer's block can happen. Why do so many upcoming producers find it so difficult to finish their tracks? I think it's just experience on the dance floor and, and, and playing tracks out to people. Uh, there's lots of variables, but that's usually, for me, when I get writer's block, it's because I've been lacking touring or being in the clubs. Is it important to learn music theory as a producer? I think so, 100%, yeah. Does being a DJ make for a better producer? Yes. Do you produce music every day or do you find you might take some time off and become a bit more fresh? I try and get in the studio uh, at least three or four times a week, but that might only sometimes be an hour, an hour and a half, just to lay ideas down. It's my final question, Alan. If you're deserting on Desert Island, what piece of gear would you like to be with you? 909. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, mate. Appreciate it.